All right, so we want to be able to answer some questions about periodic trends on our AP exam. First thing I want you to be comfortable with is knowing what this ZEF thing is that I have mentioned in class. ZEF is what we call the effective nuclear charge. So the ZEF of an atom is essentially, you know, the, the core charge, the, the positive effect of the nucleus that the outermost electrons are going to to sense. So for our representative elements, it pretty much matches the valence electrons. And I'm going to show us when we need to use Zeph as an argument when it comes to trends on the periodic table. But first, let's just kind of look at some a little bit more here. Carbon, silicon, germanium. They're in the same group. Carbon's valence electrons are on the second energy level. I'm just using one electron here to kind of represent the one electron that would be removed when we're talking about the first ionization energy. So carbon's outermost electron is on the second energy level, and it's experiencing X amount of Zeph. Silicon has its outermost electron on the third energy level. Okay, so it is also experiencing a, a certain amount of Zeph. Now there is a slight lowering of what this electron is experiencing because of what we call shielding. All right, there is kind of a shielding effect of these first two energy levels that lessens the nuclear attraction to that electron. And it gets even more so when we go out here to germanium because now we have another layer of electrons, this energy level, that is shielding the nuclear charge. Shielding is a valid argument, and it definitely does exist, but I'm going to try and show us that we don't really even have to bring this to the game, okay? And when we get to answering those questions, I'll show you where it could fit in, but why you really don't have to use it. What I want to do, though, is talk about Zeph and how it affects atoms as we go across the period now. So that was down a group. Essentially, again, down a group, we can say that the Zeph is pretty much the same. The big thing that's going on when you go down a group is the occupied energy levels are getting further and further away from the nucleus. So we're going to focus on that. But as we go across the period, let's say we talk about fluorine, chlorine, and bromine, which is a couple groups down from carbon, silicon, and germanium, we find that the Zeph is definitely increasing. And that's because you're adding an additional proton to the nuclei of these atoms, but yet the outermost electrons are in the same place. So for example, on the left, I have carbon. On the right, this is fluorine. Because of the increased Zeph, that electron is actually closer to the nucleus because the force of attraction from the nucleus is pulling it in. So not only is it closer, but it's going to take more energy to remove it. Silicon on the left, chlorine on the right. Again, we're talking about the outermost electron, so that valence shell. Chlorines is closer to the nucleus because of that increased Zeph than silicon. Germanium bromine. Okay, again, bromine's atomic radii, radii, radius <laughs> would be smaller because those electrons are being pulled in, which again also affects the first ionization energy. It would take more energy to remove this electron from bromine than it would removing this electron from germanium. So I hope that visual helps a little bit, but now let's talk about how we're going to answer these questions. So if we are going to answer questions about periodic trends, first thing I want you to do, locate the elements involved in the question. It might just be two, could be three, could be four. And whatever it is, find them on the periodic table. And what you want to figure out is which energy level, which energy shell are their valence electrons located on. Sometimes we might need to talk about the subshell for the, a specific question we'll look at, but most things can be handled here by determining which energy level the valence electrons are located on. If they're on the same valence shell, then we can argue using our good buddy Zeph. If they are different, then we're going to talk more about the distance that electron is from the nucleus and bring in Coulomb's law when necessary. All right, so let's see how this works. 
Which element has atoms with a larger atomic radii? Chlorine or bromine? Justify our answer AP style. So first I want to locate chlorine and bromine on the periodic table. Here they are in group 17. Bromine is below chlorine and so I can immediately in my head say, hey, you know what? The valence electrons for bromine are further away. And that's exactly what we want to do. Since they're in the same group, and bromine has valence electrons on the fourth shell, and chlorine is on the third shell, then as I just mentioned back here, if they are different, we want to argue using distance. Okay, and that's what I'll say. Bromine has valence electrons occupying the fourth energy level, which is further away from the nucleus than the third energy level that chlorine's valence electrons occupy. This accounts for bromine's larger atomic radius. That is a perfect answer. Well, I'm not perfect answer. That's a perfectly good answer. It covers everything that should be accepted. Now, we could see here the shielding that I was talking about, and this is what it would look like. In addition, since they are in the same group, the nuclear core charge is the same, but bromine ZEF is lessened as the core electrons shield the nuclear force of attraction that's pulling the electrons towards the nucleus, and that also accounts for the increased atomic radius of bromine. Don't worry about this per se, you know, if they bring up a question and specifically ask you about a shielding effect, then yes, you're going to want to discuss that. But when they are simply asking you, as this question is, to tell them which atoms have larger radii, then definitely I would just stick with the whole fourth versus third energy level. All right. Which element has the greater first ionization energy, tellurium or iodine. Let's find tellurium and iodine. They are right here. They're on the same period. Okay, so their valence electrons are on the same energy level. And so once we see that, then we know we're going to use our buddy Zeph. Okay. And so, tellurium and iodine, who has the greater Zeph? Well, it's going to be iodine. All right, so this is my explanation. They're both in the fifth period. The valence electrons to be removed are in the fifth shell. Remember, our first ionization energy means the, most, the outermost electron. Iodine atoms have a greater Zeph than tellurium, as an additional proton is in each iodine's atom's nucleus. This increase causes the electrons to be held in the atom with a greater force of attraction. There's our good buddy Coulomb. Causing an increase in the amount of energy it takes to remove them. Okay, so again, that's a fantastic answer. It looks long, etc. I know it's a little daunting, but again, we're not going to have multiple questions like this in a row in the short answer section. You might on your test coming up and your quick check coming up, but not on the AP exam. But again, we're arguing Zeph because those valence electrons are in the same position. They're on the fifth shell. All right, next up. Which element has atoms with larger atomic radii, cobalt or cadmium? Let's go find them. Cobalt, cadmium. Uh-oh, they're in different groups and on different periods, different rows. So what might we do? Since we're talking about the radii, I know that as I go to the right, it's decreasing. But as I go down, it's increasing. So which one wins? Well, the answer here is definitively, as you go down the periodic table, adding another energy level that is being occupied is a much bigger deal. So if you end up with elements that aren't in the same group, okay, then we want to just focus on, as this says, since they are 
in different energy shells talk about the distance. Okay. So cadmium, since cadmium has valence electrons occupying the fifth shell, which is further away from the nucleus than the fourth shell that cobalt's valence electrons occupy, then that is going to give cadmium the larger atomic radius. Okay, again, cadmium is in the fifth period, cobalt fourth, so that's how I know which shell the valence electrons are on. And that is what, why I'm going to pick cadmium, because that further energy level away from the nucleus is a much bigger deal than the Zeph from going across a little bit to the right. All right, last thing. There are those couple little, little exceptions, little bumps in the roads, things that we, you know, don't really want to dwell on per se. Yes, a little bit more for our unit test in class. And they might bring them up on the AP exam. And here we see the first ionization energy for nitrogen is 1,402 kilojoules per mole. And for oxygen, it is 1,314. Why? Well, first, we kind of have to look at what's going on and does this match our belief. So when I look at nitrogen and oxygen on the periodic table, they're on the same period, so their valence electrons are on the same uh, energy level. Second, they're both in the 2p area, actually. But what, And so what we notice is, as typically, as we go across the periodic table, my ionization energy is going to increase because of that Zeph. But this question is saying, how come nitrogen actually has nitrogen actually has a little bit higher than oxygen, which isn't what we expect. And this is where we have a little bit of electron-electron repulsion happening, courtesy of the first pairing. What does that look like? Nitrogen and oxygen, both in the second period, the electron that's being removed, the farthest one for our first ionization energy, from both of them is in the 2p sublevel. While the Zeph for oxygen is greater than nitrogen, because oxygen does indeed have an additional proton in the nucleus, less energy is actually required to remove oxygen's 2p valence electron due to the electron-electron repulsion it experiences from the first pairing. Okay, this just explains why we see those little dipsy-doos in our ionization energy graphs, like the ones you made in class. And this little diagram helps, too. You could probably include this diagram and not have to use as many words. But you can see nitrogen has one electron in each of the p orbitals. And oxygen has this first pairing. So by putting those two negative electrons, even though they're spinning in opposite directions, putting them next to each other, there's natural repulsion. And so it's easier to remove this electron because this electron next to it is basically giving it a kick in the butt and saying get out of here. All right, so that's why we see those little dipsy doos in our ionization energy graphs. Again, don't lose sleep over this aspect of it, this little um, anomaly, but <laughs> I'm going to ask you this on your quick check and you'll probably maybe see it again on your test. It's a lower probability you'll see it again on the AP exam, but maybe, who, who knows? And if you do, then fantastic. We will rock it, and you'll get those points. I hope this helps, and I'll see you soon.